It is fall. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. It's fall. That's a Shaflair, by the way. His name is Shafloofy. Joey named it of all things. Hi, friends. My name is Fall Harvest. Appropriately so. I am so ready to do my sorority Christian pumpkin spice latte poses. Y'all know this is my favorite season of the year, so I'm ready for New York City weather. It's finally under 60 degrees. Like, thank God. I can save on my electric bill. Remy, no, no, no. Remy, you want to be calm today? No, he does not. I haven't done an update video in a long time and I feel like you deserve it just because I have a new, oh God. Remy, do not, just be normal. Oh my God. I feel like it's the least I can do because we have new people, new followers, and ever since doing my series, I feel like I've lost a little bit of myself. <laughs> no, I didn't. And I actually have some deeper topics I wanna to talk about that pertain to me and my life and selfishness and uh, yeah, it's all about me. It's all about you, girl, on your 16th birthday. Hi, Future Frederick here. Before we start, I wanna let you all know that I am an Adobe Insider this year. What's that, Adobe Insider? Yeah, what does that mean? I'm just promoting Adobe Max 2021 this year. So if you don't know what that is, if you're a creative, okay, if you like design, if you use Adobe products, listen up, this is very important. Adobe Max is an event that features a bunch of different speakers talking about their own successes in design. And you get to listen to conferences, virtually of course, talking about new things coming to Adobe. Photographers, designers, social media people. I'm not a speaker this year, but hopefully one day. So if you're interested, it's free. Let me clarify, it is F-R-E-E. -E. Go sign up, link is in the description. Now let's start. As always, all the products are linked in the description if you care about it. So the reason why you're probably clicking right now in this video is because you saw coming out in the title or mental health. And you all know I've come out already. I've always been out on YouTube. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I ever hit it because I started YouTube when I already came out to my family and my friends. But recently I've been feeling like I need to readjust or at least re-explain my identity, even though it's literally no one's business but my own. Uh, I have to say it online because people will still ask no matter what, and that's the world we live in. Thanks, not y'all, like other people. So I made a community post on YouTube and I was just like, hey everyone, I know there's a lot of people asking about my pronouns, which first of all, I just wanna say thank you for respecting that. I have never seen a community more and yes, I'm talking good about y'all, so please keep up your reputation. Don't Taylor Swift this. Actually, it wasn't her fault. Don't Kanye West this. A lot of people really care about not misgendering me, so for anyone who's curious, my pronouns are usually he slash they. Ooh. That's some new information. And maybe some people are like, whoa, that's new. Yeah, it is. But also, I want to clarify, you can call me any pronoun you want. Do not be scared of misgendering me. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to be offended. Unless it's a slur, of course. And just by saying that, it already raises a bunch of comments saying, Oh my god, I didn't know you were non-binary. I'm not. Actually, I don't know. And I don't care. I don't want to know. I'm fine not knowing for once in my life. And I'll explain this in another video. I've always had some qualms about TikTok and, well, I always hate TikTok, but, but I always thought the way we care about labels in the queer community is a little bit toxic now to the point where it's like, oh, because someone didn't state their sexuality, they can't do X, Y, Z or else that's queer baiting. Or someone like makes one joke on TikTok and it's their boyfriend and then everyone's like, honey, he's obviously gay. The thing they do with Shawn Mendes, like, I get it's a joke within our own community and it's like a kiki. I'm not saying we can't joke about that, but you have to think about what that other person feels. And don't say, oh, he's a celebrity. He's a freaking human being. Like, how would you feel if everyone questioned your sexuality as a kid? Oh wait, they did. <laughs> Let me stop. But it's annoying. You don't want people to be up in your business. So why do we allow it with other people who are on a platform? Because we already dehumanize them by saying idol, icon, etc. That's for another topic though. For me personally, seeing everyone talk about what non-binary means and seeing my own friends come out as it, I checked myself. I was like, do you care if someone calls you they, Frederick? And I asked some friends, I was like, can you just call me that? for a little bit, like I wanna see, I wanna test it. And I didn't care. And then I thought more about it, I was like, well, I usually joke about like, she's this, she's a queen. And that's just like a joke we say in general. But then I also realized I don't care if someone calls me that, even if they're trying to insult me because I am confident with myself. Remy, get out of this, get, 
get out of the ring light. And I know that might upset people. They're saying like, why don't you care about it? Like that allows people to misgender us. But I disagree because it's my identity. It's my own expression. So what someone else does to me should not affect you and your expression. Do you get what I'm saying? Everyone cares about other people's businesses, sexualities, identities, express or whatever, like the whole nine yards. But what does that have to do with you? Unless it's negatively affecting the community, like, you know, you know who, let it be. I think the most self-confidence is not caring what other people say about you or how they refer to you because you have your own identity and another person's words doesn't affect that anymore. And this may sound narcissistic, and I am very well aware of that, but I think I'm at that point just because I don't care. I just don't care anymore. I don't want to be labeled as non-binary. I just, I want to be a person. I know I'm so much more than just a sexuality, you know, a pronoun. And just because I don't care to slap it on myself, on my forehead, and tell it to everyone, doesn't mean it's not there and it's not valid. I think we're just used to seeing it always being presented in a label form because of TV, social media, and Hollywood emphasizing coming out to like an entire yearly event. That's not even an exaggeration. People literally do articles titled celebrities that came out this year. And I know because of that and the videos about coming out, just talking about queerness in general on TikTok, they all emphasize the idea of it. So when you're thinking about your sexuality and your coming of age and you're exploring different identities, you're wondering to yourself, hmm, do I need to come out? How do I come out? I know from growing up, watching BuzzFeed videos, reading quizzes, talking about coming out and their stories, I got worried that if I didn't, it's not a valid thing. My sexuality is not approved until I come out to at least one person, which no, <laughs> no. That just implies queerness depends on heterosexuality. You have to make up for what's not the norm. I don't get it. Well, actually I do get it. I don't want to be ignorant and say, you shouldn't come out, like break the barrier. Don't care about your sexuality. We live in a world that cares about it. So you can't just ignore it. That's like saying, I don't see color, like shut up. <laughs> That's not how the world works. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. Little rat. I've seen DMs from y'all and I, I really appreciate that you trust me with this information and you think I'm qualified enough to give advice. But first of all, I'm not a therapist and I, I don't, speak for all gay people. I'm not offended by it. It's just sad to see people who are scared to come out because they don't know the correct way. Suddenly there is a right and a wrong way to come out. I always get questions. How do I come out? What do you think I should do for coming out to XYZ, homophobic parents, just friends, online? What if they're Indian? What if I live in a country that's not legal? And it's like, there is no blueprint, there is no book. Well, there probably is a book, don't read them. This might be hard to digest, but there is no single way to come out and no one should tell you how to because it is your own story and it is optional. Asterix, because for some people it is required. Either they are forced to come out of the closet or, you know, it's a very small exception, but I'm like trying to say, for the most part, it's optional. For example, if you know your parents are already accepting, you can just say you have a girlfriend. No explanation as to why, because it's, once again, none of their business, it's yours. And it's for them to decide whether or not to be okay with it. You don't have to make up for that. I get some arguments of people saying, well, doesn't that eliminate your queerness? And no, why does coming out equate to suddenly being queer? Your sexuality does not depend on someone else's opinion of it. <laughs> All right. I'm not gay unless I say it verbally. No. Let me know if you want an entire video dedicated to this topic because I love going into this. It's such a big topic to me just because I know how many people are affected by it from my audience. And as much as I wish we could live in a world where pronouns, gender, sexuality doesn't matter, that's not how we live. And not everyone has the privilege to be able to live like that. So in short, I still like guys, <laughs> that hasn't changed. Sorry y'all, not happening anytime soon. But I've gotten to the point where I am so vain. <laughs> Delusion, <laughs> convince yourself. And I'm confident with myself to not have to think about how other people are going to view me. If someone on the internet calls me something else, don't yell at them. And if someone asks, politely just answer. That brings me to mental health and confidence because that plays an obvious role as to why I'm here right now. Because it's autumn, 
everyone's gonna start talking about seasonal depression again, right? And I understand it's a thing. It's like, yes, because we have shorter days and there is less sunlight and we typically have cloudier days, we feel more depressed. And there is a science behind humans not getting enough sunlight and leading to depression. Why do you think Alaskans are so happy? <laughs> I'm not kidding. There is a study on sunlight and happiness. But I feel like when we all talk about like, ugh, it's just seasonal depression, it kind of negates depression. It's like, oh, it's because of because of the season. Forget about brain activity, it's because leaves are falling and turning red. And I used to do that too, and it's not like I don't blame anyone for saying that, but my point is, I don't want y'all to downplay your feelings. It can almost be invalidating, in my opinion, so just be wary about your feelings. Don't go to TikTok for your mental health advice, please. Look who decided to join. He finally got his zoomies out. So I want to give some context as to how I typically feel each year because I've said it in a video a long time ago. I go through these things when I go back into college where my YouTube, and this is gonna, I need to do a warning. My emotions are tied to how well my YouTube channel does and that is not a healthy thing and I'm working very hard on it. And I know I care about it a lot just because it's my job and it's my dream career. So of course I will be upset if it's not doing as well, but I got into this loop of, oh, don't you dare, you betray. I got into this loop of thinking I cannot be happy unless this does well. And for other things, you know, I can't be happy unless my grades are good unless my relationships are good, unless I have a boyfriend. And since taking this class called Signs of Happiness, which if your school has that in college, take it. You learn so much about yourself. I'll do a video on classes in the future, but I learned in that class that we tend to bring happiness after success. Once I get into college, I'll be happy. Once I have a job, I'll be happy, which does not last because the moment you get that part, suddenly you're on the next thing to make you happy. We don't allow ourselves to celebrate before the victory. And that makes me upset because it's true. We, it's true. It's, it's Ollie London true. true. Everyone does that at some point. But lately I've been feeling, I guess, the most stable. I don't know how the best way to put it. Probably because I do have a boyfriend who keeps me <laughs> in check, but I have a person who's there for me now. And I have someone I can fall back on when I'm down. I don't have as much stress in my life besides college and YouTube. Before in high school, it was getting my parents to accept me, getting friends in high school, dealing with losing friends, relationships, being single, getting a job, cause I was a cashier and YouTube and school and college. Like the things that high schoolers go to, God help you all. I don't know how you're surviving Zoom, but just know I'm proud of you. And you need to tell yourself that more. Why do you think TikToks that say, Hey, just a reminder, you're doing good. There's so much comments saying, thanks, I needed that. We don't give it to ourselves. We don't love ourselves as much as we should because we don't allow it. We don't assume that's okay. Hold on, why am I blending like this? This is terrible. I want to do a video on how to be confident because there are so many factors that go into it. I'm not going to be able to explain this video. Short answer, I'm more confident now than I've ever been. And I have some advice, learn to appreciate little things you do more. Today, I made my bed. I'm gonna give myself an applause for that. I fed my fish, I fed my cat, I fed myself. Remy, don't you do it! Remy! Oh, that looks stupid. When I was at my worst place in high school, I went to my principal for help. Thanks to you, okay? Like, if you're watching, you help me. He told me this thing that I still carry with myself today, and it's, you need to say in the mirror once every day, I love me some me. Maybe rephrase it to something less cringy. Okay, point is, learn to give yourself positive affirmations every day, or at least once a week, if you, you're you not ready for that, because some people don't believe they deserve it. And that's a hard mindset to get out of. And you're gonna say, Frederick, that sounds freaking stupid. And you know what? You are correct. But, and it's a big one, it works. Psychologically, it also works. You know that thing when people say, if you force yourself to smile, you start to feel happier? kind of happens. Why do optimists do better in school than pessimists? Why do they do better in life? Why do they tend to make more money? Optimists are also more likely to not develop a cold, and if they do get one, they recover twice as fast. Did I learn all of this in that one class? Yes, but it's eye-opening because technically, pessimism is worse if you want to be better in life. Does that mean you're wrong for being a pessimist? No. Like, I'm not sitting here thinking, life is so beautiful, like I'm so excited for the future. No, I know what's coming for me. But I tend to think of optimism as appreciating what you have, taking the day one by one and not going into the future. Taylor Swift refuses to go past six months into the future, so 
what does that say about us? We should be more like her. But once I started telling myself that I love me some me, it, it helped me and it turned into like a routine, it was a motto. How hard is it to say it in the mirror, Frederick? It takes one second, but even if you don't believe it, do me a favor, just do it. I don't care if you hate it. I don't care if you don't believe it'll work because give it a month or so, see what's happened. This goes beyond us as well because most of the time, if you're someone who doesn't want to do that, you're saying, oh, that's stupid, like it's not gonna work. You also might not accept compliments from people when they give it to you. I remember like when I was very insecure, I would do this when anyone told me, oh, you look so good today, I would be like, oh no, it's just like, uh, stop, you don't mean that. I would reject the compliment. And looking back, it's like, why? It's a compliment. Unless they're being cynical or it's a man being too pushy onto a woman, take the compliment. Think of it as rejecting a gift. You wouldn't want to do that either, right? Unless you don't think you deserve a gift. I'm not going to go too far just because this is a very big topic, so I can't cover it in one video. But let me know if you want me to make a video about confidence because from someone who has gone through... <laughs> I did the roller coaster myself. There's a ton of advice that I wish I knew back then so that I wouldn't have to deal with insecurity as much. But I want to clarify I'm not perfect because for some reason, happy people on YouTube and TikTok are not allowed to be happy because suddenly we're pushing toxic pasta. You know that thing where it's like someone has a boyfriend and they're just being cute on TikTok? No harm, nothing. They're just like holding hands. Comment section, at least you have a boyfriend. Wow, can't relate. Oh my god, there's something in my eye. Why are we like that? Why can't we celebrate people ha being happy? It's like, y'all just like pain? Or are we being envious now? Which, ContraPoints video on envy. Go watch it. Very eye-opening. I am victim of it. If anything, I feel like those videos make me want to be that. It's like, oh, they can do it. Why can't I? I guess it just depends on mindsets though. Point is, maybe we shouldn't comment something like that. I'm so tired of self-deprecation. It's not, it does not help in life. I will die on the hill that nothing is beneficial from self-deprecation besides reaffirming your own negative mindset. I used to do it too. I would be like, oh, I'm not even good at painting. And it's like, no, I literally can't say that because I can do it. That's like me saying I can't play piano. I was like, Frederick, you literally can't say that. Accept the compliment and stop trying to feel like you're not worth something. I got off track again. A few weeks ago, I had this really bad period of stress where I had a breakout. I didn't really show it on camera just because uh, makeup and lighting, but it's clear now, it's pretty good. It's not perfect, obviously, but who cares? I mean, I did that. I had a lot of homework coming up. Not even though, like homework is not that hard nowadays. What am I saying? It was just a lot of things going on with YouTube and my personal life. And it just started to like affect what I thought of myself. Every time something goes wrong, I start to be unmotivated. I instantly don't think about YouTube. I start to tell myself, you're not gonna be successful in life. Just spiraling. Instead of scrolling down social media and feeling worse about myself, it's just doing it to yourself in your mind. And I have to remind myself, Frederick, this is a wave it'll crash and you will be fine in the future. But I just want you all to know, just because I am a beautiful, confident <laughs> YouTuber doesn't mean I don't have bad days or days where I don't do this. I can't be on all the time. I don't think anyone can. I think that'd be weird because it's like saying your body is just never off. Oh wow. Like you have to recharge at some point. And I'm not saying like, oh, being depressed is you recharging. It's most of the time, if not all, we get burnout just by being successful and always, you know, striving for the best and constantly doing things. I remember I told myself I would do a video a week on YouTube, which I can do, TikToks, Instagram reels. And then I said, I'm gonna do makeup tutorials. I'm going to work on my second channel. I have a podcast that I'm still doing and we restarted it this year. Gaming channel, I'm going to do Twitch. And then I have to remember, well, you're also in college. So like, what are we gonna prioritize? I can't do it all. Hopefully I can once I'm done with college, but that'd be so sad to do all that stuff and then not care about like friends, eating food, getting enough sleep. I'm just a machine! You're not a machine and I shouldn't treat myself like that. So for anyone who's wondering, you know, when are you gonna stream again? It'll come, but not all the time because I do wanna prioritize myself first. And YouTube, of course. Like I care about this more than Twitch. Sorry, until they give me a partnership. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm gonna be caring about you too. Some other things in my life, if you haven't seen the video talking about my new baby kitten, this is him. He's been good. He's more normal now. I do want to get his balls off. I don't know what the word, spade, I think? Yeah, he needs to get that done. I recently hit my one year anniversary with Joey. It's so weird. I didn't even know it came up that fast. And it's like, I got comfortable living with him. Obviously, like I have to, you know, you should be comfortable with your boyfriend, but it just works. Like he's at work right now and I'm not sitting here like, mm, I wish he was here. We have a good balance and I'm happy. Like. I'm very excited to see what happens next year. In terms of my future, I mean. I also want to answer this question that I keep getting on YouTube. It's people saying, when are you going to do art videos again? Listen, why did I say that? You, ha you have to listen. Oh my God. They are not going away. I've taken a break just because I physically don't have the time. Mm -mm -mm. It takes me three to four hours to film these videos, but an art video, eight. And I want to live my college life, please. It's my last year. More on that in a second. But I have a list of stuff I'm going to do. It just depends on when I have the time. So when I go home for weekends, Christmas break, Thanksgiving break are coming up. So hopefully I can do a video there. If y'all can just subscribe for one more year until summer, that's when art videos will be consistent because I'm not going to be doing anything else. At least I'm not leaving the internet, okay? So yeah, speaking of college, people keep asking me like, hey, how are you graduating in this year? <laughs> you, didn't you just get into college? Yes, I'm graduating a year early simply because I took enough credits in high school to transfer over. AP credits, y'all, get on it. Just make sure your school allows them. And I've been taking like 18 credits to 21 each semester, so... That's why. I also took summer classes and I might take a winter class this year. It is a lot, but it's not that hard. I can handle it. The reason why I want to graduate early is because I don't want to give NYU any more of my coin. And I also want to work on YouTube more. I was this close to taking a gap, this close y'all, to taking a gap year just because I thought I'm not getting any progress by being on Zoom. Why don't I pull the typical YouTuber move and just pause my education for now and use what I have because I had that fear of if I didn't do the most during like my first viral video, then I would just be irrelevant after. There's that saying that's like, oh, after your first viral video, you have two to three years to milk it before you start to die down. I think Simply No Logical said that. And I got scared. It's like, well, that is my college year. So if I just prioritize my education over YouTube, I might not have YouTube after. But if I do YouTube first, then I don't get to experience college like everyone else and then have to wait. And I already made friends. So I still chose education because I thought it'd be doing a disservice to what I want to do on YouTube. I'm tired, I'm tired y'all of people just dropping out the moment they get famous. It's like, I don't want to promote that. That's why I love Jenna Marvel so much because she got a master's. I want y'all to pursue education and not be like, oh, because Frederick didn't do it, I don't have to. I'm not saying education is for everyone. I'm just saying it's not something we should overlook. Don't drop out of college just because your favorite person did so, okay? But also at the same time, know that college is not going to guarantee happiness in life because uh, Mm -mm. As for my senior year, it's been really nice. It's all in person and we're required to. We wear masks, we vaccinated. These are my favorite classes by far this year just because I've had the most freedom in choosing the classes I want. And I'm also living in Manhattan, so it's easier to commute. And I feel like I'm finally living college life because online just wasn't it. It's sad. You're paying just as much as you were in person. So what's the point of online school if we're not getting the full experience? Ugh. I also just feel like I'm finally reaching like adulthood. I mean, I, I am 20, so like technically, but I'm finding friends outside of college. I'm going out more. And I think just because I'm more active and, you know, trying to hang out with friends more, it's led to me being more happy. As for my plans after college, I'm not too sure. And I also don't care. I'm tired of people pressuring me. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, mom. But seriously, like, why does everyone have to know what they're doing after college? Why can't I just have general goals? I didn't even know I'd be doing this. I don't know where I'm going in life. And I think there's, I think there's a metaphor in there. No, I think it's nice because I don't have to stress as much about my future because I'm okay with not knowing. At the same time, I do understand why I'm able to not care just because I have a job. Obviously, when you don't have a job, there's gonna be more anxiety about that, but this is about me. This is selfish time, okay? I still don't know if I'm going to use my degree or not, and you know, overall, it's okay because that's always my backup plan if this doesn't go the best way. And no one said I can't multitask. I might use that to make my own business. Oh my god. 
I'm beautiful today. I've also been watching The Voice on Hulu. I usually just watch it on YouTube, but like it's actually very entertaining and I enjoy it a lot. I'm not 100% sure on names, but if Jiminy doesn't win the competition, I'm gonna scream. And going off of TV shows, I know you've all noticed that I've sort of changed how I do my videos now. There's a lot of more makeup in there, more commentary, more talking about reviews of shows and pop culture and i've been enjoying it i don't know why this is so fun to me like i just like exploring makeup and doing this and then talking to y'all it feels natural but i also want to know what you all want to see from me in the future don't do not say art videos i already told you all they're coming i kind of wanted to expand off of tv shows i don't want to be a review channel necessarily because tv shows take a while to watch and i get tired but i kind of wanted to start this series called I don't know the name, okay? I'm working on it. It was going to be called Gay News. It's part of the Making Up My Mind series, but it's like, you know, a sub-series. Why, why do I call it a series? It's not like it's professional or formal. But there's a lot of news that relate to us, like talking about bisexual Superman recently, things that are happening like in politics. I kind of want to do a weekly condensed version. You know how Philip DeFranco talks about news? That, but makeup and gay. Let me know a title. I don't want to use gay. We can do better. We came up with making up my mind. We can do this, y'all. I believe. I also wanna do more fashion things. It's just, it's hard to do that right now just because I don't have as much light as I want to. Maybe you're thinking, Frederick, what do you mean? It's good lighting. No, nope. there. It's not the best, is it? But that can be for next year. It's not like I do them too often. I don't even have the room for a big closet, so. We'll just save that for next year because I definitely will be moving into a bigger apartment. She's upping the budget because it's time to invest and not save. Oh, that's another adult thing. Financial management. So I got a financial advisor and they're just basically someone who's like, oh, put your money in this, do that. I trust them because my sisters work with them. So yeah, like once you start to make money, think about investing it because you don't want to save it. At least not all of it. And before you say, Frederick, make a video on that. No, that's... Boring. Watch a video on it. <laughs> Ask your parents. Also, because I've been going out more, I've just been meeting more of you all. Like, I met someone yesterday at L Train Vintage, a thrift shop here. And then I saw someone else who I couldn't tell if they actually knew me because they stared at me with their friend and then they checked their Instagram. I was like, are they looking me up? And I kept thinking to myself, do I say hi? No, because if they don't know you, that'd be embarrassing. That's also assuming people care about you enough to know you, Frederick. So that's all that's been happening with my life. I'll probably do an update video come like next month or two. I feel like it's important for me to give updates. Things that are gonna be coming in the future, just be on the lookout for Halloween videos. <laughs> Yes, you got Halloween outfits for me, but you don't know that. Thanksgiving videos. We're gonna be cooking a Thanksgiving meal again. Y'all liked it the first time, so. I don't know what to do for Christmas though, let me know. There's some new merch coming this way. It's a plushy shh. And there's gonna be some posters that are... I won't say anything, just get ready. And that brings us to the end of the video. So if you enjoyed, give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe for more videos every week. I try to post every Saturday. If not, turn on post notifications. Thank you to all the patrons for supporting me. Y'all the best. And if you want to support me, just go to patreon.com slash Frederick Chen. Pay whatever you want, minimum a dollar. Social medias are all right here. Mm -mm 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 here <laughs> and cat Instagram, I have one. Podcast, I have one. Go listen to it. It's on Spotify, Apple, everything else. And as always, I love you all. And everything is less than three. Peace. So juicy. Mm. Uh. <laughs>